there's another guitar technique that I think is important if you're if you're producing records or you're engineering you want to you want to be able to have some things that you can just make the song sound just next level and it's a guitar with different tuning on it it's called Nashville tuning most producers big you know indie country folk singer songwriter somewhere in the world they either have a 12 string acoustic 12 string electric but if you want to be able to make your current guitar into a Nashville kind of tuning guitar, you need to do it on a Fender Telecaster or any brand Telecaster or a Stratocaster, something rock solid that can take high tension. Don't ever do Nashville tuning on a Les Paul or an SG or any jazz guitar, anything that's hollow body electrics, uh, you're going to break the neck on it because it's high tension because the neck will start to bow up. This is our donor guitar for our Nashville tuning. It's actually from a band called Spirit in the Room. Dennis, this, this is a guitar, thank you. Um, we did, I did the record for Spirit in the Room and we did Nashville tuning on this. So at the studio, it happens to be in the next room. And so I didn't restring it. That's why I can tell you exactly what the gauges were, but it's something like that. This high ing would be like 10, 13, 10, uh, 17, um, maybe 20 something. And then if you can, this one has, it feels like a little bit of wine. We may have ran out of a string. It's probably like a 22 or something. And it's basically looks just like a regular guitar, except. It sounds like a capoed guitar, but it's not. You can capo these, uh, bands that had utilized this in their songwriting would be like Fleetwood Mac, Neil Young, and any, the Eagles, you know, it's a nice little dandy. You'll be hearing it soon. I have the Telecaster running into my delay from the previous song, which is an Ibanez delay. It's running into an EP3 solid state Echoplex. It's going into that next room being powered into a old, maybe a 1960s or 50s Sears Twin 12 head, tube head, maybe like 30 watts, 40 watts, not a lot, but it sounds, it's a beautiful sounding head, simple tone, I think it's like bass treble, uh, I don't even think there's a middle on it. Um, that's running into a Fender Leslie cabinet. A Leslie cabinet, and we all have plugins that you can get a Leslie type of effect. It's basically a speaker that spins. These Fender's speakers are not spinning. Uh, it's like a plastic enclosure that, that's around the speaker, and it spins around with an opening. So as the sound comes out, like whoop, whoop, and every time it comes around, whatever you're playing through comes through, that's the Leslie effect. So I have an old one, and it's the same one that would have been used on like Black Hole Sun by Soundgarden. If you're familiar with that song, it's a beautiful guitar part. So I'm gonna play something, maybe not as pretty as that, but I'm gonna do an overdub. So what I'm doing on the actual sound is like I said, I'm running it through the Echoplex, and I got the Echoplex turned up pretty high, almost to a point where if I was playing guitar, I probably wouldn't have it that high, but I wanna blur the sound. I don't wanna make it, because of the pulsing sound, I wanna kinda of blur that so it's not as hard as far as percussive. Um, my delay is, is set up a little bit high, which is the digital delay pedal on the floor. Yeah, I, I don't have any distortion or gain on it, so it's just normal. On the plugin that I have on these channels, the same time delay that I put on the drum rooms to kind of give it a little bit of space, I added it to uh, Omni C12 tube mic in the room at the end of the room. Uh, but that is just something that I can take off or take on. I just did it, I wanted to see what it sounded like. So hard right, here's the ribbon. Now here is just the room. Now if you notice there's not a lot of ambience in it because that room is not it's not like a hallway or there's this really big sound but there is some low end in the room and that's what we had the drums in it sounds really intense but if you put them both together <laughs> Okay, so now I'm gonna play the track. 
I'm gonna playlist each one. I'm just gonna kind of get in a ballpark of something I think it sounds cool, and that's always the end of the game. And remember, if, if I did this whole setup and I don't like the way it sounds, or if you're recording it and you do some kind of crazy thing, different guitar, different amp, if it doesn't sound good in the song, you shouldn't use it. And for the sake of doing it to be cool, I don't know, I think the song is more important than how cool this is and how cool it sounds, which it does. So make your decision if you do this, uh, make sure it makes the song sound better. And I'll try to play it to make the song sound better. And that's always the goal of producing. And even though I'm wearing two hats of playing and producing, I'll try to use my best judgment. I'm gonna roll through kind of feeling out what this guitar is gonna sound like with the track. quick listen to some sections, not the whole song again. And just to make sure that it sounds cool with the track. So that is kind of loud so I can hear it, but it doesn't have to be that loud. And if you're gonna mix it, I think you could put some reverb on it. One of my favorite reverbs is Sound Toys. And uh, I'm gonna put it on it right now just to know, now that we've tracked it and if I don't like it, I can play it again. I just wanna see if it's gonna work with uh, just being blurred a little bit more. So I'm gonna put this reverb on it. Uh, let's see what it sounds like. I'm soloing the, just the ribbon mic close mic. Now one thing I'm gonna do now is that this, these guitars should not interfere too much with some of the other signals. So I'm gonna put a low cut on it. it kind of cleans up so it doesn't become mud on mud. So I'm just gonna cut, I'm using a simple Pro Tools EQ. Most of the time I'm using EQ is either cutting uh, low end or upper frequencies to make it fit. So I'm gonna exaggerate this one. I'm just gonna, just gonna take a little bit of the woof out of the close mic and then just see if how that sounds. This is another little thing for EQs, which is cool. If you have a mix of 30 things, 20 things, 15 things, even 10 things, a lot of times when you're looking at your master bus, you'll see it always in the red. And that doesn't mean that there's sound that actually you're hearing that's making your level go up. It's actually just frequencies that you don't really need. So if you have a lot of synths and guitars and you've added all these tracks, go through them and listen to them. And sometimes you can cut off some low end or cut off some top and that doesn't even, you can't even hear it unless you have dog ears or rabbit ears. So in that case, you're kind of cleaning up your track. And I noticed that when I first started recording, I have NS10s. I only used NS10s for a long time. And my first year I had them, I blew five speakers and I obviously didn't know about low end and what I was doing. And the speakers would move. Now with my new setup, I can be slamming the heaviest low end and the speakers are barely moving. Because I filled the spectrum with sound and things that I know are there and I want there. So when you're like even my guitars that, that mic that I use on my main guitars, my thoughts are when I get to mix it, I'm gonna put a low cut on it. Matter of fact, I think I did. Yeah, I put an SSL EQ on it, but I only engaged the low cut. And I think I put it at 40. Yeah. So I noticed that it made the track sit a little bit better because you have big drums, big bass, and you need to, even for me, even my own band, and even though I think the guitars sound huge, uh, there's a point where I start adding that, up, adding all the tracks up, and suddenly you have a lot of unwanted low end. So long story long, Check your low end of things. And like I said, on this particular guitar, I'm using an EQ that's cutting the low 
and I'm cutting the high, so it almost looks like I've made a mountain of only the information that I want to come to the mix. Now, I haven't done anything to the room mic yet, but I want to make them so they sound pretty with the track, not muddy up too much stuff. And also, my guitar is technically a lot darker than most guitars, but that's intentional. Uh, that's the way I like it. But for me personally, I like the raw, dark, almost you could say analog sound. So here's the, with the cut on it. Obviously the room's slamming, so let me get that in order. I just did the low cut on the room mic, and I'm gonna put the re identical reverbs on the, and the cut on the close mic. Okay, it, it works good. So I'm gonna put them both together now with the cuts and let's just see how they sound. It gives you almost a 3D image. There's something in the, however that plug in, it doesn't sound totally on one side. When you put it on your, uh, whatever it is you're using, it gives it a full sound. But uh, like I said, I'm putting a low cut on this, on the actual reverb. So I'm adjusting just the gain stage of the LA-2A. And also, just to make a note, I think I mentioned that I do have the ribbon mic running into uh, the BG-1 uh, tube limiter. And I have it set so it's slightly a little bit distorted, kind of thick sounding. The BG-1 is the mono version of the BG-2. And the one reason I choose to use that sometimes on overdub tracks, once again, it's tube. And it's so powerful that even if I didn't have my mic pre on, it actually is a mic pre and a compressor in one. So that tells you the next level, that it makes everything you put in it sound really large and cool. When you're in the digital world, sometimes that tube, ribbon, room sounds, that's what makes recording sound really fat. I'm going with it. So I love the way it sounds. I think it sounds cool. What I would probably suggest is when I'm gonna mix it, I may wanna just automate that. And you know, because there's long tails on the end of it and I can probably go in, in the files and clean it up, which I may end up doing anyways. So uh, as far as adding anything more to the song, I think that's kind of it.